we focus primarily on wowing our employees. So we want, you know, we want our leadership team to, to be that as their number one goal. Like let's wow our employees first. Our employees then in turn will be happy and, and uh, advancing in their career and doing better and learning. And so they in turn will know what they need to do and they'll do it with a positive attitude and they'll wow our customers. And so when our customers are wowed, um, they, you know, they're happy and they reward us financially. And, you know, we're, we're open book management. So that, um, that reward flows back to those employees and creates a, a good, you know, good cycle there, right? They, they get that tangible reward and then continue to be happy and um, continue to wow the customers. You know, what our customers are buying from us is uh, people, process, and technology. Uh, we have two different sort of business models, if you will. We run uh, multi-client distribution centers, and uh, we also run dedicated distribution centers. So some of our bigger customers are um, the, the latter, the dedicated distribution center. You know, they're not buying our building, uh, they're not buying our capital infrastructure, they're buying our people, our process, and our technology. You know, those three, uh, the, the people that are on our team, is by far the most important. Welcome to Growth Think Tank. This is the one and only place where you will get insight from the founders and the CEOs of the fastest growing privately held companies. I am the host. My name is Gene Hammett. I help leaders and their teams navigate the defining moments of their growth. Are you ready to grow? Putting customers first. Probably sounds natural to you that your company should put customers first. I wouldn't disagree with that statement. But here's something to think about. Leaders and the company are different. Leaders have a different kind of focus that is necessary for them to organize the people and to get them to coordinate together. When you put customers first as a leader, there's something in the back of your mind that says that whatever the customers want and, and all of the value that is necessary for us to keep going, we can take away a little bit from our employees. They're expected to give that so that the company can run smoothly. Now, what I want you to really think about today is what if that idea to put customers first as a leader is wrong? What if putting employees first was a way that you could actually create more connection, create more empowerment, trust, and those employees were able to put customers first. We have a special guest today on the podcast. Happy to, to announce that we have, we have Tim Barrett and Arthur Barrett. It's a family-owned business, Barrett Distribution. They've been on the ink list 11 times, so consistent growth, eight consecutively. And it gets harder and harder when you get over 100 million to grow at this pace and keep up with these smaller companies. But this company does something different than all of their peers. They understand that putting employees first is really the key to the overall success of the business. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to unpack some of the elements around putting employees first, what it means. Uh, we're going to talk about transparency and open book management. We're going to talk about uh, the autonomy that's necessary. There's a lot that goes into this. So tune in to be a better leader and understand the difference. Make the decision for yourself. As a leader, what's more important, your employees or your customers? Now, if you haven't already checked out the training that we have to create um, a better leadership environment for your organization and to grow faster, make sure you go to genehammett.com forward slash training. It's a free tool that we've been using and sharing with our audience to get them really tuned in to what does it take to go beyond where you are today. Just go to genehammett.com forward slash training, get the three mistakes, learn how to avoid them, and make sure that you evolve as a leader. Now, here's the interview with Tim and Arthur. Hey, guys, how are you? Very good, thanks. How are you doing? Great, great, Gene. Thank you. Tim you? and Arthur, glad to have you here on the show. We're going to talk about the leadership that has been uh, instrumental to growing the company consistently and fast over the years. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, Barrett Distribution. So I'll go first, I guess. We're, so we're a uh, third party logistics company. So we run distribution centers uh, for other companies that outsource that function to us. So we do e-commerce fulfillment. 
and uh, wholesale distribution to retail stores for basically any consumer product. So, you know, apparel, footwear, health and beauty care, any, any kind of item like that that you could think of that um, is purchased in retail store or, or via e-commerce. Um, it's a uh, family business. Arthur and I are third generation. I've been, we've been running it together for about 25 years. So it wasn't always e-commerce. What was, has it always just been logistics? Uh, always been logistics. So uh, started out as a uh, textile warehouse, believe it or not. So in the 1940s, um, my grandfather started the business and um, worked with some of the textile mills in, in New England and mostly handled imported bales of wool, of all things, that uh, came in from South America and Australia and UK and um, transported them from the docks up to the warehouse and then from there to the mills. So that was how it started. And then obviously morphed over time. Um, probably got it. We got into e-commerce early, probably right around uh, 99, 2000. That was early. I was working yeah. with a technology company in 99. We were connecting to the back ends like uh, JD Edwards and Oracle to make e-commerce possible. And I remember the, I was having conversations like, do you even have pictures of your products? <laughs> and most people were like, no, not yet. Um, do you have descriptions? And they're like, no, not yet. <laughs> um, that's how early I was into e-commerce. So I, I'm excited to talk to you today about um, when we were doing some research into your company, you, you thought that the people were an integral part to the success and the growth of your company. Why are the people so important? You want to go harder? Uh, so I can sure. take, so the, yeah, just, so for us, we're, um, we're growing fast. You know, we, um, we're geographically dispersed. So we, you know, we have to rely on, on people that, that we trust and, um, you know, put a lot of faith in and a, and a, and a lot of, um, you know, a, a lot of trust, I guess, for lack of a better word. So that is, um, you know, really important to our growth. It frankly lets me sleep at night that I know I have a good team that I, that I can rely on and believe in and know that they're going to do the right thing. Um, we, uh, you know, we really focus. So our, our, our strategy, if you want to call it that, is that we, we focus primarily on wowing our employees. So we want, you know, we want our leadership team to, to view that as their number one goal. Like let's wow our employees first. Our employees then in turn will be happy and and uh, advancing in their career and doing better and learning. And so they in turn will know what they need to do and they'll do it with a positive attitude and they'll wow our customers. And so when our customers are wowed, um, they, you know, they're happy and they reward us financially. And, you know, we're, we're open book management. So that, um, that reward flows back to those employees and creates a, a good, you know, good cycle there, right? They, they get that, tangible reward and then continue to be happy and um, continue to wow the customers. Hold on for a second. They just mentioned open book management. You probably know what that is, but let me just make sure that we're all on the same page. And my perspective of open book management is this, that you willing to share the financial aspects of the company with your team openly across everyone, not just the, the top tier, not just the people who need to know it. Everyone gets to understand what the numbers mean. Everyone is taught and trained on how their role inside the company plays into the numbers. And everyone gets to see those numbers on a regular basis so that you can actually grow as a team. And when people understand those numbers, open book management really can be powerful because they can actually see things that maybe you don't see. They can see the patterns because they're not inside it and looking at it um, the same way you are. They're, they have a different perspective. Now, does it take work? Absolutely. Does it take a commitment and courage to open up your books to everyone? Absolutely. But open book management is not something new, but it can be a very powerful way to align people together. Back to the interview. I, I have an imp impossible question that I ask from time to time. That question is impossible because it's really hard to pick. Um, and some companies really struggle with this, but I want to ask you guys this. Don't know what you would say, but based on what you just said, I probably have a good idea. Um, as a leader, what's more important, your customers or your employees? Oh, employees. <laughs> so yeah, that was quick to, to come back on that. Why, why employees <laughs> so important? Well, they're the backbone of the organization. Um, obviously, you need the customers to produce the revenue, but um, we've, we've really built our business on 
the fabric, the moral fabric, the core values of our employees. Um, that's, that's, that's the most important thing that I do as a leader of the organization is uh, be very selective about the people we add to the team. I often say that, um, you know, what our customers are buying from us is uh, people, process, and technology. Uh, we have two different sort of business models, if you will. We run uh, multi-client distribution centers, and uh, we also run dedicated distribution centers. So some of our bigger customers are um, the, the latter, the dedicated distribution center, you know, they're not buying our building, uh, they're not buying our capital infrastructure, they're buying our people, our process, and our technology. And of those three, uh, the, the, the people that are on our team is by far the most important. I, I once got told by a very established, very large publicly traded company CEO, I shared that one question with them and I told them the results, which I haven't shared with you, but specifically, Fast growth companies like yourself that are on the ink list, when I ask that question, 94% of the time will say it's employees first. So you're a good company, but I've been told I'm wrong. Bigger companies, I think, um, look very short-term focused. And so they think customers are first. And I, and I know this is, this is, you know, companies have to put customers first to get value. But why do you think companies grow to a certain point where that begins to shift back to customers? Uh, that's a good question. I, I would say it's, it's not the right approach, <laughs> but I guess it's because they're so focused on the top line. You know, I think as you get bigger, that top line becomes a beast that you have to continue to feed. And maybe, you know, I'm just speculating, they, maybe they view, you know, that revenue stream as being so important to maintaining that top line growth that, um, that they focus on that. And maybe they feel like, you know, I've, to just touched on people, process, and technology. Maybe they focus more on their process as opposed to the people that are that are making it happen. You know, and they feel like their their process is so solid and locked in that they can plug and play with the people. I, I don't know. I'm speculating. I have no. I don't really know. <laughs> I, I want to ask you another question. That's kind of about the industry. You had probably saw some of the news that was going on with Amazon, and I don't. I don't have an idea about this. But what were your thoughts on? Um, Amazon, you know, the way they were treating employees through this whole COVID, COVID thing. Um, you know, I, 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 first of all, I would say that um, most likely there's two sides to that story, right? And, and I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure it was as bad as it was portrayed, but I guess that's part of the problem, right? So I may, you know, I, I would guess that they lost a bit of touch with, um, you know, making those employees feel valued and, you know, listening to them and um, it's probably a lesson they've learned. You know, I think, I think, you know, you see videos of Jeff Bezos now visiting the DCs and, and, you know, you know, making a personal, making personal connections with the employees. And so, you know, that's, that's what we do. You know, Arthur um, visits every single facility, every single quarter and hands out, you know, hands out our gain share checks into, you know, personally to all our employees, you know, like that, that touch, um, you know, it's, it's, we want to do it because we want to thank the employees, but I think it's meaningful to the employees too, that we take the time to do that. He takes well, the time I, to do it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might answer it just a little bit differently. Um, I don't think we really know how Amazon is treating their employees. We know how a very small number of employees, um, were sort of portrayed in the media as being treated, but I don't know that I would paint Amazon with such a broad brush. Um, it's, it, I think it's one of the few times that um, Amazon did not control the message and I think it got away from them, so. Well, uh, I would add to that just a little bit. I, I, Bezos is actually very famous. I, I talk about this on stages whenever I talk to groups. Um, He's a very intelligent leader. He's been very successful. No one's going to argue with that. But he believes in customer first over employees. It's, it's gone mm -hmm. on record. Um, but when you think about, you know, I, I think it's a hard question. It's a, that's the reason I call it that impossible question. But I, I figured that you guys would put the attention on employees because 
you know, being a family owned business, you understand this, you've grown to over a thousand employees. Is that right? Yeah. That you, sometimes you lose touch with it. So I'm really kind of, um, you know, thrilled about having you on here to talk about how do you truly do put employees first through this process. We've already talked about why it's important. Let's talk about how you're doing it day in and day out. So I know that selecting the right people is important, onboarding them. What are the other core elements that you think about as a company to create the kind of employee experience that, that makes people really love and, and wow them, as you say? Well, uh, first that comes to my mind would be recognition. Um, and that starts with giving people the opportunity to advance. Um, but I, I think we do a pretty good job of recognizing when people do go above and beyond what they thought they might have been able to do in their own mind um, and, and really celebrating that achievement. Um, we don't do enough of it. Uh, we're trying to do more and more. Um, that's part of the reason why I make the rounds and get to every building every quarter. Um, and I, we recognition started something is very new. important. Have you learned anything about how best to do that, that, that provides the connection that you want with your team? Well, we started something new last year where uh, each quarter we asked people to nominate an employee of the quarter who um, best demonstrates and lives by one of our core values. And we formed a selection team to actually um, make the final um, selection of five employees each quarter, one for each of our five core values. And, um, you know, that really has motivated teams across the country to strive for um, always better, which is, in fact, one of our core values. Well, I love that idea. Do you name that something specific or give me some details behind that program? Um, it, well, it's nothing fancy. We just, um, I think we just <laughs> label it employee of the quarter. Um, and rather than have one, we have five. Um, and the five are the, you know, the, the five people who each demonstrated best one of those five core values. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell notifications to be notified of every time we post a new video. Make sure you do it now. I heard one leadership guy, and I, I don't know his name, I, I probably wouldn't even share it if I did because I don't agree with this, um, but they had said that this kind of competition amongst employees sets the wrong tone. You don't want competition, you want collaboration. And I get that, but I feel like the peer-to-peer -peer adds something to this. Like they're recognizing their own and you're reinforcing those core values. There's so many pluses behind this that overweigh, I guess, some negative competition element. Do you feel the same way or am I wrong? Um, I, don't, I don't really see it as a competition. You know, people are nominated by their peers and their leaders. Um, and then a selection team, you know, makes that final, um, that final call, but it's not like people are vying against each other to be recognized for that one uh, core value. I, I don't see it as competition either, but I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, some people have that perspective of, you know, competition inside of the workplace is not right. And I just, I see it as a chance to recognize you can't, we can't all be, you know, the same person, you know, we have to have some, something to strive for. When you yeah. think about um, autonomy inside this, because I know that was one of the things that you said was very important to the employee experience. Did you guys, you have a dis, you know, very distributed workforce, autonomy is necessary. How do you make sure that that's, that's really a part of the culture? That the autonomy is part of the culture? Yep. Um, so we're, we're, well, I don't know, we're, we're an open book management company, right? So we, um, so each, each facility, each um, operation, you know, each team, um, they're not all necessarily in an operation, um, really has responsibility for their own P&L, you know, their own, and, and their, you know, every, so every employee in our company gets an update on where we are every single week. So we're forecasting the current month um, you know, saying, you know, showing where we're at in, you know, in their 
facility and also company wide. Um, and where we are year to date, and, it, and they get an update on what that means in terms of a bonus for the quarter, where they're at for a bonus for the year. Um, so they're they're very in tune to, you know, to the business. And we um, we do a lot every week. We do training with every single employee every single week gets some form of training on um, the business. So, you know, outside of their job function, you know, trying to help them learn more about the business. How do we make money? You know, what, what are the, how do we manage costs? What costs go into a certain category? Um, they're, they're hopefully, you know, all learning a little bit more about, you know, how, how we are successful and what we need to do to be successful. And, you know, that, that drop that we have, you know, people that are driven, like they're driven to, you know, to continue to do better, right? They're measuring their productivity. They're measuring their units per hour. They all know exactly where they are on the units per hour this week versus last week versus last quarter. And um, they're, they're focused on it. They're focused on quality metrics. You know, how are we doing with the customers? What's our last customer survey um, for, you know, the customer that I happen to work on? Um, you know, how are we doing with, you know, any, if, you know, ship errors or any other in, imperfections? You know, we, we record all those in our quality system and we, we do, you know, corrective actions and we, you know, so people are, you know, people are really in tune to it. They're, they're, they're just kind of, they're really vested into the business. I don't know if you caught that, but they really invest in training people weekly. Now this is different types of training. I actually talked to them off the record about it. I won't go into the details, but my question for you is how are you training your people on a weekly basis? Are you? You may say, we don't need to do that. But there's probably something in the, the business that they need to learn to be reminded of. And having the ability to train people weekly and making that an important piece to the organization, people begin to understand this. Now, it's got to be good training. It's got to actually move the needle. It can't be boring. So all that I'm trying to say here and put a spotlight on for you is, as a leader, how are you training your employees on a regular basis, not once a year, not once a quarter, on a regular basis. Back to the interview. Part of this open book management is around transparency. Um, some companies don't really you know, embrace that level of transparency. They're, they're afraid to share the numbers. They're afraid to explain how the business works. They're, they're afraid to, to truly open up maybe how much profit is being generated. Um, have you guys seen a benefit by having this this kind of approach and transparency level within the company? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets everybody pulling in the same direction. Um, and they're, they're fired, about, fired up about their numbers. Um, every, every building that I visit, we go to the whiteboard, and they take me through their numbers, and they're quite proud of those metrics quite proud of their accomplishments and um, you know most importantly really fired up about what it means for dollars in their pocket you know it, it's a real um, it's an organization of a thousand people all pulling the boat in the same direction that sounds corny but it really is what we have achieved through this open book management concept how long have you been doing it uh, 12 years yeah, Perfect. more, I think. I'd say more than, yeah, it's been a while. Did you get that from one of the, the business thought leaders around this? Um, and you, if, if so, who do you remember getting it from? Well, we, we pattern our program after the book, uh, The Great Game of Business. It yep. was written by Jack Stack. Um, so we include just about every aspect of that program other than uh, the equity in the business. Well, I really appreciate Tim and Arthur, you being here to share your journey of leadership and, and consecutive growth and, and your really focus on employees. Uh, employee first is something is near and dear to me. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that wisdom. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks. Yeah, enjoy glad it. Glad to be with you, Gene. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Putting employees first. I love this conversation. It's a little bit polarizing because I think a lot of people would argue with me that it has to be customers. And I don't want you to get this wrong. Organizations, companies should put customers first, but leaders have to look at who
who are the people inside the organization? Remove their concerns for their own uh, treatment and, and really wow the employees. It's one of the concepts I pulled away from Tim and Author. And hopefully you picked up on that. Now, these guys are really evolved leaders. They're, they're working really hard to develop the next class of leaders inside their organization. They've invested heavily into training and they've been using a, another company that it's not my company. But what are you doing to evolve and really train your employees to have the kind of leadership that you expect of them to be strong leaders, to be influential, to be visionary? Well, it takes some special training to do that. We happen to have an assessment to, to help you out with that. The first step is to look at the training. Go to genehammett.com forward slash training and give you three mistakes that organizations make that keep them from scaling and keep them from creating a, a team of A players. So check out that training, genehammett.com forward slash training. When you think about podcast and growing, hopefully you think about Growth Think Tank. As always, lead with courage. We'll see you next time.